succeeding in Iraq, and every indicator is that, and we will reduce casualties and gradually eliminate them. Anybody who doesn't understand that it's not American presence, it's American casualties. We have American troops all over the world today, and nobody complains about it because we're defending freedom. That's one of the obligations of being the world superpower. I'm proud to be the only one on this stage that said that we have to abandon the Rumsfeld strategy and we have to adopt the strategy that is succeeding. And that's happened. I'm the only one that said that. It is succeeding and we will be able to reduce our costs and we will be able to have a stable Middle East where our vital national interests, national security interests are at stake. And I'm so proud of the job that the men and women in the military are doing there. And they don't want us to raise the white flag of surrender like Senator Clinton does. They know we can win. And their message to you and to me is, let us win. Senator McCain, thank you. Uh, Governor Romney, uh, uh, retired four-star U.S. Army General Barry McCaffrey is just back from one of his many trips from Iraq and has written a, a report, uh, an after-action report on his findings. Uh, this sentence uh, stood out. The U.S. Army is too small and poorly resourced to continue successful counterinsurgency operations in Iraq and Afghanistan at the current level. Question, Governor, is how do you double the size of it from 400,000 to 800,000, as the general recommends in here, without a draft? Well, I'm recommending that we add 100,000 uh, active duty personnel to our military. We're right now at about 1.5 million. Take that out to about 1.6 million. We found in our state that we were losing enrollees for the National Guard at about 6% per year. And the legislature and I got together and passed something called the Welcome Home Bill. We said, you know what, if you'll sign up for the National Guard, we'll pay for your entire education for four years. We put in some other benefits as well, life insurance and other features that we decided to pay for. And the result of that was the next year our enrollments went up 30%. And so if we want more people to sign up for the military, we have to improve the deal. And, and frankly, our GI Bill has gotten a little old. We need to update our funding level for that so that the young people who go into the military get a full ride as they come home and get to go into college. But let me step back also and just talk about what we saw the other night with the Democratic debate as we think about the commitment that needs to be made to Iraq and Afghanistan. It is simply unthinkable that the Democrats would have said at that debate when they were asked, what's more important to you, that we get out or that we win? That with their answer, they wouldn't answer it directly, but with each of their answer, it was very clear getting out was their only objective. Just get out as fast as you can, regardless of the consequences. And that's simply wrong. We cannot turn Iraq over to Al-Qaeda and have Al-Qaeda have a safe haven from which they could recruit uh, people to carry out bombings, uh, to attack this country and our friends around the world. It's unthinkable. And that's why I will not walk away from Iraq until we have been successful and fi finish that job. And one more thing. What, a, what an audacious and arrogant thing for the Democrats to say, as Hillary Clinton did, that they are responsible for the progress that the surge has seen by virtue of their trying to pull out so quickly. Look, the success over there is due to the, the blood and the courage of our servicemen and women and to General Petraeus and to President Bush, not to General Hillary Clinton. Governor, thank you, Tim. The, the Wall Street Journal NBC News poll today, the highest percentage ever of Americans, six in 10, said that the removal of Saddam Hussein from power was not worth the price we have paid in blood and treasure. Every Democratic yet, excuse me, excuse me please. The Democratic nominee will go to the country and say, the war in Iraq is a bad idea, not worth the price in blood and treasure, and we should get out. I want each of you to take 30 seconds. Will you go to the country, Senator McCain, and say, the war was a good idea, worth the price in blood and treasure, and we will stay. It was worth getting rid of Saddam Hussein. He had used uh, weapons of mass destruction, and it's clear that he was hell-bent on acquiring them. The problem was not the invasion of Iraq. The problem was the mishandling of Iraq for nearly four years by Rumsfeld. And again, I railed against that. I was criticized by Republicans. There were others that they called for a phased or secret withdrawal. The war in Iraq is justified because of the threat of Saddam Hussein. It was the mishandling of the war. Now we're on the right track. Now we are succeeding. And if we withdraw, and if we decide that we have to get out of there, I guarantee you Al-Qaeda will be trumpeting to the world I, that they but, have but defeated the United States of America. Senator, my question is, was, the, my answer, was the war a good idea worth 
the price in blood and treasure. It was a good idea. It was not worth the failures that happened, but it, it is worth it at the end of the day because we will have peace and success in the Middle East and our men and women will return and return with honor and they won't have to go back and I'll fight Al Qaeda there. Mayor Giuliani, was the war a good idea and worth the price in blood and treasure? It's very, very interesting that the way you put that question is with a poll because when the polls were six and seven out of ten Americans thinking it was a good idea, Hillary Clinton was in favor of the war. Mm -hmm. And now when the polls are six out of ten are against, Hillary Clinton is against the war. What does Rudy Giuliani be, think? I, I was for it when six out of ten were for it. I'm for it when six out of ten are against it. I'm for it not because of polls, but because America is in a war, an Islamic terrorist war against us. America has to succeed in Iraq and the goal in Iraq is an Iraq that's stable and an ally of the United States. And to be president of the United States, you have to be able to read polls, but you can't have them push you around. Congressman Paul, was the war a good idea worth the blood and treasure that we have spent? It was a very bad idea and it wasn't worth it. There, the Al-Qaeda wasn't there then, they're there now. There were no weapons of mass destruction, it had nothing to do with 9-11, there was no aggression. This decision on policy was made in 1998 under the previous administration because they called for the removal of Saddam Hussein. It wasn't worth it. And it's a sad story because we started that war and we should never be a country that starts war needlessly. Governor Huckabee, was the war a good idea and is it worth the cost and blood and treasure? I supported the president when he led us into this as did the Democrats. And I think we owe him not a lot of scorn, we owe him our thanks that he had the courage to recognize there was a potential of weapons of mass destruction, and rather than wait until we had another attack, he went and made sure that it wasn't going to happen from Saddam Hussein. Now everybody can look back and say, oh, well, we didn't find the weapons. Doesn't mean they weren't there. Just because you didn't find every Easter egg didn't mean that it wasn't planted. My point is that when the president acted, this country was united in believing it was a necessary thing to do. It's easy to second guess a president. Whoever of us is elected will be second guessed too, but I hope we have the courage and the resolve once we commit to something to make sure that we don't back away just because the polls say we should. Governor Romney, was the war in Iraq a good idea worth the cost and blood and treasure we have spent? It was the right decision to go into Iraq. I supported it at the time, I support it now. It was not well managed in the after the takedown of Saddam Hussein and his military. That was done brilliantly, an extraordinary success. But in the years that followed, it was not well. We were undermanaged, underprepared, underplanned, understaffed. And then we come into the phase that we have now. The plan that President Bush and General Petraeus put together is working. It's changing lives there. And perhaps most importantly, it's making sure that Al-Qaeda and no other group like them is becoming a superpower, if you will, in the, in the, in the communities and, and having a safe haven from which they launch attacks against us. It's, it's critical for us. When we, when we think about debating the Democrats, they might want to go back and talk about what happened at the beginning. But the most important issue is what do we do now? And their just run and retreat, regardless of the consequences, is going to be a real problem for them when they face a debate with a Republican on the stage. Governor Romney, thanks. Time is up. As we go to a break, two quick notes. We've asked members of the audience prior to going on the air tonight to uh, not uh, applaud, no outbursts of any kind. We're going to have to uh, repeat that request. Number two, we have embedded in tonight's broadcast two short commercial breaks to give everyone in here a break. We're going to take the first of those now. When we come back in the next segment, the candidates will ask each other the questions. Have you seen this? This is for you in the lap. This is, okay. It's unbelievable. We are back in Boca Raton, Florida, where we just now have a quorum back on stage. Our candidates are assembled, and we are going to begin uh, the second segment of tonight's debate, where the candidates can ask the fellow candidate of their choice a question. The answer falls into the 90-second category uh, in the exigency that a rebuttal is required. Those, again, moderator's discretion for 30 seconds. We're going to start this round with Governor Romney. Um, I think uh, Governor Huckabee raised a good question when he spoke about China.